Right now, could Assembly Speaker Robin Voss face a recall election? The Wisconsin Elections Commission will decide after finding enough signatures in an effort to remove him from office. Plus, hear from the pastor at one Jefferson Church after its steeple catches fire, likely caused by lightning. And how businesses in Milwaukee are anticipating crowds for the Republican National Convention now less than three weeks. That's all ahead on News 3 Now at 10. Thank you for joining us. The Wisconsin Elections Commission says just enough signatures were submitted to force a recall election of Assembly Leader Robin Voss, but there is confusion over the districts where those signatures came from. Here's what that issue. New voting maps. 6,866 signatures were gathered, 16 more than the required amount. But the key con question that commissioners are trying to figure out is whether those signatures needed to come from the district Voss was elected to in 2022 or if they should have come from his district created under new maps in effect for this year's election. Now, Voss has been targeted by supporters of former President Trump for refusing to decertify President Biden's 2020 win in Wisconsin. Voss is responding tonight with claims of signature fraud, saying the committee collected more than 300 invalid signatures after the defined 60-day window. He says in part, we're confident they have not met the threshold for recall and will present our argument to the commission on Thursday. That's when the WEC is set to vote on whether to order a recall election. Brand new at 10, authorities are investigating a death after someone was found unresponsive near the intersection of Whitney Way and Research Park Boulevard in Madison Monday. It was just before 1.45 yesterday afternoon when bystanders found the person and began life-saving measures. Madison police officers and firefighters responded to help try and resuscitate the person, but the individual later died at the hospital. St. John the Baptist Catholic Church in Jefferson has canceled events and services this week after a suspected lightning strike set fire to its steeple last night. 24 departments from neighboring areas responded to the call around 9 p.m. yesterday. They had the fire extinguished by 1 in the morning. The church pastor says a majority of the damage is because of the water, but he says crews did a great job containing that damage. Now, the church will be boarded off to ensure that it's structurally sound Next crews can start the drying process. Firefighters did a remarkable job of um, diverting the water back out of the church after it came down through the tower. So they put a lot of water on it, a lot of foam, um, brought an apparatus in from Verona to be able to get up to the peak. Crews also brought a crane in earlier this morning to remove the cross in hopes of repairing it. And it's a warm and muggy late evening right now. A sign of summer in the Midwest is the humidity, and we certainly felt it today. Meteorologist Jacob Montesano outside in that muggy weather on the patio tonight. He joins us right now for the first one forecast. Jacob. Yeah, you can feel the humidity still out here, but the good news is that at least for the rest of this week, humidity values will not be as bad as they were today. Now let's take a look at the temperatures. 90 degrees was the high for Madison. A lot of the area got to around 90, but we're not going to be really anywhere close to 90 through the weekend, but maybe as we get closer to the 4th, we'll start to see those temperatures get closer to the lower 90s. Now, current temperatures are still fairly mild, upper 70s for a lot of Dane County, lower 70s for surrounding areas. And as I mentioned, we're still seeing some higher humidity values with dew points still in the upper 60s and lower 70s. Earlier today, there were times where the dew points were in the lower 80s. So a very humid day, but as I've been talking about, it's not going to be as bad going forward. Still seeing a few very light showers. We did have a thunderstorm produce a severe thunderstorm warning south uh, of Dane County and Rock and Walworth County, but right now we are fairly dry and for the rest of the night we are going to be mostly dry with just a few light showers here and there and the dry weather will continue for the most part during the day on Wednesday. Now I'll talk more in detail about the forecast for the rest of this week and track our next chance of storms coming up a little bit later. Jacob, thank you. Voters in the Madison Metropolitan School District will find two referenda questions on their ballots this November. One is to help fund operations, and another is to help build new buildings and planned renovations at current ones. The funding question has voters choosing to approve $100 million to be distributed over four school years. The facilities question asks the community to provide more than half a billion dollars to replace the eight schools in the district and renovation of four others. Well, Concerts on the Square returns tomorrow for its 41st year. That means you can expect an increase in vehicle and pedestrian traffic on Wednesdays throughout the Isthmus and Capitol Square areas. We'll be out there tomorrow afternoon, starting with our Live at 4 newscast, continuing through News 3 Now at 6. Tomorrow's concert begins at 7 p.m. 
featuring three time Grammy nominated Afro Caribbean music group, the Empro Libre 2.0. But you'll want to get there early with your lawn chair and blanket to claim your spot. Next week's Monona Community Festival will be its last. The 4th of July Festival has had fireworks, carnival rides, and live music for decades. But the city is saying farewell to the event after next week. The announcement about its future came yesterday after being held nearly every summer since the 1960s. Organizers say fewer volunteers, increased costs, and new city regulations are why they're retiring that festival. Despite that, they're hoping for one final big party. I remember being that little kid laying out on the lawn and looking up at the sky, seeing all the great fireworks going for the carnival rides and the kids' bike parade, like generations of families that are coming to enjoy this event. And we would rather see, you know, one big last party down in Winnicott Park than the festival slowly deteriorate over years and years. So we figure, let's go out with a bang. Redding says that while the city suggested the festival team apply for sponsorships from the Tourism Commission, doing so would just be another add to the workload of an already overwhelmed staff. The Monona Community Festival is at Winnequa Park all day Wednesday, July 3rd and Thursday, July 4th. Well, good news for Wisconsin dairy farmers. Small and mid-sized dairy businesses are receiving $12 million in funding from the USDA. That money made possible through its Dairy Business Innovation Initiatives. That announcement coming today at Decatur Dairy in Broadhead. Since 2019, more than $160 million has been awarded through the innovation initiatives. $45 million of that has gone to the Midwest dairy industry. Steve Stetler, a cheesemaker at Decatur Dairy, says he's already received $50,000 of this money before, and that came in handy. I got a cutter and sl a slab handler to make it easier for our employees. And the technology and all that was expensive. And the $50,000 was a very good, uh, you know, st a shot in the arm, go to say, to help us out. And the money doesn't just have to be used for equipment. It can also be used for business plan developing, marketing, and branding as well. A fusion tech company in Janesville is launching a new ingredient in its fight against various cancers. The company, Shine Technologies, is calling the ingredient Illumera, a nuclear fusion that Shine Technologies says helps deliver radiation to kill cancer cells while also limiting the impact to surrounding healthy tissues. Illumera offers a new hope for patients by potentially improving outcomes and quality of life. So when you inject it, uh, it targets the cancer cells only, uh, and because it's a it's a very short range radiation emitter, it doesn't hit the healthy cells. It, like the radiation travels less than a millimeter, um, so it only affects the cells that absorb the material. Pfeiffer is also a UW alum who came up with the idea for Shine as a student in Madison. More than 40 other UW alumni work at Shine Technologies. And the Republican National Convention is less than three weeks away from taking over Milwaukee. The city and businesses are ready for an influx of people. Kyria Sandlin shares how business owners are prepping for the crowds. Between the lunch and dinner rush on a Tuesday afternoon, the kitchen at the Edison is ready for the RNC. We were a little slow in the beginning, but in the last uh, couple of weeks, we've really um, taking a, a lot of business. Chris Adams is the chief operating officer for Benson's Restaurant Group. The Edison is one of seven restaurants they run, most of them in the third ward. The Edison and Onesto are outside the security zone and preparing for the rush. From cocktail parties to fine dining, full service, um, some are catered in different locations. Uh, it's been helpful that it's in the summer because that's when we're really staffed up. Just a few blocks away, Dan Nowak, owner of Brazen Standard Hospitality, is prepping his catering brands for RNC visitors. We have a bunch of good events booked that week, uh, both kind of inside the, if you want to call it the danger zone, the security perimeter, um, and also in the rest of downtown Milwaukee. So some uh, regular clients, some new clients. A lot of the events are probably like the, you know, 100, 150-ish people, uh, a lot of cocktail receptions. The, a lot of the things that we're doing are uh, afternoon, so there's a lot of people getting out of the convention and they're kind of party hopping. The executive director of the Historic Third Ward Association says their location should bring in plenty of foot traffic. Any summer week down here is always bumping, so we expect just the same, just add in the RNC attendees that, that, that can make it out of the security zone and come see us. 
The Republican National Convention takes place July 15th through July 18th. We'll bring you coverage from all four days there on News 3 Now and Channel 3000.com. And a live look right now at the U.S. Capitol in Washington, D.C., where earlier tonight the most decorated Olympian of all time testified during a special primetime hearing. Swimming superstar Michael Phelps appearing on a House panel about anti-doping efforts ahead of the upcoming Paris Olympics. The hearing comes just months after reports of close to two dozen Chinese athletes tested positive for a banned substance, but went on to compete in the 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games. Chinese authorities say those positive tests were the result of contaminated testing samples. While competing at the highest levels, I witnessed firsthand the pervasive uncertainty and the suspicion surrounding doping which significantly affected my, con my confidence and that of my fellow athletes. The hardest part was seeing athletes achieve seemingly impossible feats, knowing the immense effort and sacrifices required to reach these heights cleanly. The World Anti-Doping Agency was not represented at tonight's hearing. More stories ahead at 10. Dozens of people remain unaccounted for as wildfires burn thousands of acres in New Mexico. We take a look at the searches underway for those missing. Pay jackpot at Ho-Chunk Gaming Wisconsin Dells, and you'll have a chance to win a new Jeep Grand Cherokee and a shot at $100,000 in cash. It's the Mega Jackpot Winners Quarterly Drawings going on now at Ho-Chunk Gaming Wisconsin Dells. Your odds are better here. All the best parts of summer are here at Summerfest. 600 artists, 12 stages, three unforgettable weekends. Summerfest, presented by American Family Insurance. Find tickets, line up, and more at Summerfest.com. Get an 11% rebate on all things outdoors at Menards. For all your outdoor storage needs, Aero Storage Products has you covered. These metal sheds come pre-cut and pre-drilled for faster assembly. This 12 by 12 classic shed is designed with a high peak for extra headroom and space to store your tall yard tools. Get it today for just $8.99.99 99 after 11% rebate. Save big money at Menards. They say that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Well, they are correct. Enjoy one of our tasty steak patty sandwiches paired with a $2 medium iced coffee. ba da ba ba, -ba. A lot of law firms claim to be experts at handling injury cases that involve large trucks. But handling one trucking case does not make you an expert on the subject. Experience matters in these cases. One local firm has handled 25 trucking cases which resulted in payments over $1 million each, and hundreds of others as well. Because Wisconsinites know who to call when it's a must-win scenario. They call Habish, Habish & Rotier. National reputation, hometown service. One day only, this Thursday, June 27th. Save big on High V Butter, just $2.99. Washington Red Cherries, just $2.77 a pound. Six pack bottles of Coke products, just $2.99. Gatorade 8 packs, just $4.99. High V Shredded Cheese, three for just $4. And buy one, get one free Doritos. Get these great deals and more, Thursday only and only at High V. Win a hand paint jackpot at Ho-Chunk Gaming Wisconsin Dells, and you'll have a chance to win a new Jeep Grand Cherokee and a shot at $100,000 in cash. It's the Mega Jackpot Winners Quarterly Drawings going on now at Ho-Chunk Gaming Wisconsin Dells. Your odds are better here. Supermodel Winnie Harlow is back on the Jennifer Hudson Show. We're taking the runway today. Yeah! Plus, I share another music moment with Dionne Warwick. Then, Eamon Elliott joins us. On the next Jennifer Hudson Show at 3. You're watching News 3 Now at 10, moving forward. Welcome back. The savings are coming soon if you're an Amazon Prime customer. Amazon's 10th Prime Day event will take place on July 16th and July 17th, giving Prime members exclusive access to millions of deals. The company's vice president says customers saved nearly $24 billion last year from deals and coupons. Well, look at this. A SpaceX Falcon heavy rocket blasted off from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida earlier today, carrying a special weather satellite. NASA live streamed the launch of the fourth and final satellite in the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's GOES-R series.
And officials say this satellite will give meteorologists a better ability to provide advanced weather forecasts and warnings. It can also improve detection and monitoring of space weather hazards. And in New Mexico, crews continue to battle thousands of acres of wildfires as emergency responders search for victims. Part of the search team, including dogs, looking for any residents still unaccounted for. Dania Bacchus shows us some of the destruction. With the help of FEMA dogs, search and recovery teams scoured areas hardest hit by the deadly New Mexico wildfires. Those who evacuated from the village of Riadoso are returning, while some residents stayed put during the fires. We kind of saw it all happen and we've been here the whole week and yeah, it's real tragic what we saw and all the houses that burned down. People are just beginning to assess their losses in this close-knit community. Going from that quiet, kind of eerie and of course you can still smell the aroma of smoke to mass chaos today was a little bit unnerving for sure. Riadoso's mayor says a few residents remain unaccounted for after thousands fled their homes when the wildfires approached. Well, I'm anxious to see if everything's okay at the house. The main thing that we're going to the house, but our place didn't burn. In the past few days, rain along with cooler weather and high humidity have helped firefighters battle the flames, which were first reported over a week ago. In all, the fires charred about 40 square miles and at least two deaths were confirmed. Officials say some 1,500 structures were destroyed or damaged. Don Yubakis, CBS News. And back here in the Midwest, severe flooding has left at least two people dead, one in Iowa and another in South Dakota. In Iowa, a levee failure on the Sioux River prompted the evacuation of several communities. This comes after days of catastrophic flooding and severe storms. Officials in Clay County, Iowa, say a man in his 70s died after attempting to drive a pickup across rapid floodwaters only to be swept away. President Biden approved a disaster declaration on Monday freeing up federal funds for relief efforts. And in southern Minnesota, officials gave an update on the imminent danger at the Rapidan Dam after pressure from high water and debris caused the west bank to the river of the river to collapse, allowing water to flow through. This is in Blue Earth County near Mankato. The dam is still intact and there are no plans for a mass evacuation at this time. The structure of the dam is still intact and in place. The water ran around, as you can see right behind me, the water ran around the west edge of the dam and is now eroding the slopes to the west and to the north. Crews are still continuing to monitor the dam and assessing it. Residents living nearby have been told to stay alert. An unusual plane this morning at Milwaukee's Mitchell International Airport. An Air India flight from New Delhi to Chicago was diverted there because of severe weather moving through the Chicago area. The plane landed just after 7.30. After about two and a half hours there, it took off for O'Hare. In case you're curious, that flight took just 22 minutes. Well, time for another check out the first one forecast. Here's meteorologist Jacob Montesano. Jacob. Thank you, Armand. Here's a look at the three things you need to know going forward for Wednesday. It's not going to be as warm and it's also going to be fairly dry. As we look at the next chance of storms, that will come Friday. But overall, we're going to see cooler temperatures and humid conditions aren't going to be as bad for the rest of the week. In fact, it's going to be pretty comfortable through the weekend. Now, looking at the current radar, we are beginning to see some more light showers pop up, especially west of Dane County. This may continue throughout the night, but we're not expecting anything severe and most of our area shouldn't see any rain at all. So looking at the overnight forecast, variable cloudy skies with lows still fairly mild as they're only going to drop into the upper 60s. Again, a stray shower is possible, but as we get to the afternoon tomorrow, we are certainly going to be dry by then. Highs will be in the lower 80s, so cooler than the lower 90s that we saw for a lot of our area today. And then after tomorrow, we're talking about high temperatures in the 70s for the most part. Now looking at future casts, as I mentioned, we could see a few light showers hours overnight into the early morning hours Wednesday, but plenty of sunshine is in the forecast for Wednesday afternoon. A few clouds may roll in here or there, but we're not expecting any rainfall for tomorrow or Thursday as well. In fact, Thursday, Although we are going to see more cloud cover, we're once again going to see plenty of sunshine, especially later in the day. But as Friday rolls around, we are going to see more showers move into our area. But this round of rain looks like it will mostly be in the form of just some steady showers. A few thunderstorms are possible, but right now the severe uh, weather risk is very low on Friday. But a lot of our area is expected to see rain nonetheless, but only during the late morning into the early afternoon hours. And total precipitation will be a lot less than we've seen from some of these previous systems that brought plenty of thunderstorms 
thunderstorm activity. We're only talking about a half inch at most for much of our area, maybe a little bit more the further west you are located. Now, as we take a look at the high temperature trend over the next 10 days, as I talked about, mostly in the 70s from Thursday through Monday. In fact, Sunday, we're talking about highs in the lower 70s, but we are going to be back in the middle to lower 80s by the time we get to next week. But at this point, we're not expecting really anything close to 90. Now, looking towards the beginning of July, we are expecting above average temperatures, but nothing quite as warm as what places in the southeastern portion of the United States will see. So although we are going to be warm, it looks like we're not going to see anything brutal, especially considering how other parts of the United States have already seen these temperatures well over 100. So nothing terribly above or below average going forward, and we're not expecting a lot of uh, uh, rain going forward either. Again, Friday rain is likely, but we're not expecting any severe weather. And then for next week, we are going to see the thunderstorm chances increase a little bit. Tuesday, we're expecting some storms, and then another chance of storms are possible for Thursday and Friday. Next Thursday is actually the 4th of July, so a little bit of a or miss right now. Things could still change between now and then, but right now expect some thunderstorms with temperatures in the lower 80s for the 4th. Jacob, thank you. This week, News 3 Now is partnering with Babies and Beyond for the Community Baby Shower. Together, we've been able to help hundreds of families over the years by providing necessities for expectant mothers and babies. Some items needed are diapers, clothes, and other critical supplies. The event runs now through the 29th, and for a list of drop-off sites, just head to this story at channel3000.com. And coming up in sports, how the Brewers rallied to beat the Rangers and win the series. The game-winning home run, that's next on News 3 Now. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Chevy Trucks Advanced Camera Technology lets you see over, under, through, and any other direction you may need. Up to eight available cameras and 14 views, so you can focus on the view that really matters. Don't miss a thing. Chevy's got you. Qualified lessees can get this 2024 Silverado for around $4.49 a month. Chevrolet, the number one selling brand in Wisconsin. Are you happy with your lawn? At Natural Lawn of America, we believe a healthy, safer lawn is closer than you think. Our trained technicians will help your lawn build natural defense against weeds and pests. In addition to fertilizing and weed control, we offer core aeration and overseeding with our proprietary blend strengthening your lawn, bringing air to the root soil and naturally crowding out weeds. Natural Lawn of America, your direct route to a healthier lawn, safer lawn care naturally. Call today for a free quote. On the next Buzz Dune of Madison, we're continuing our dairy farm celebration up here in Wisconsin Dells at Walk Era Farms. We're going to meet Allie and hear all about the Walker dairy story and meet this sweet girl. That's next on Buzz Dune of Madison. Those of us in the middle class are getting crushed right now. The biggest corporations jack up prices on everything, and then they don't even pay their share of taxes. It's total bull to be honest. But President Biden's plan closes the corporate tax loopholes and uses that money to protect Social Security and invest in clean energy to drive down our costs. It also caps prices on prescription drugs. The president's plan stops the corporate giveaways and lowers costs for us. I'm so happy I just put this dress on that I haven't worn in over 10 years. This summer, feel confident from head to toe with Sonobello Permanent Fat Removal and get summer body ready in just one visit. I saw the results immediately. It's the best I have felt since I was in my 20s. My waist is tiny, so I'm very, very happy. I'm nearly 50, y'all, and my abs haven't been this flat since before I had kids. For a limited time, take advantage of Sonobello's biggest sale of the year. Sono Bellows board certified surgeons use micro laser technology to safely target and remove your diet resistant fat cells for good on your stomach, hips and thighs, back, and so much more. It will change your life. It did for me. I can't wait till the summertime hit. Hot mom summer, here I come. Call 1-800-905-6520 now or go to sonobello.com to claim special pricing. Brothers Maine enjoys 4th of July festivities with family, friends, and fabulous kitchen and laundry deals. Our fireworks of savings on GE appliances and free delivery will make you ooh and ah. Feel like family at Brothers Maine.
Reese Brantmeyer couldn't have asked for a better sophomore season at North Carolina. The Whitewater native won both the singles and doubles titles at the ITA Fall Championships. And this summer, she's back where it all started at the same UW-Whitewater tennis camp she went to when she was younger that helped her fall in love in the game. Now, Brant Meyer is teaching at the camp and giving back to her hometown with hopes of inspiring the next generation. It's been so amazing to watch myself grow as a person and a player as, um, as I've been here. You know, my first year here, I was eight years old and didn't know how to play tennis, and now I'm in a much different place and um, much older and more experienced in tennis, but this camp is always the same and it's always so much fun. So if I can give that back to some other eight-year-old that is going to fall in love with tennis because of it, it would mean the world to me. Ever since EA Sports announced they're bringing back their college football video game, the waiting part for that July 19th release date has been a little tough. But the trailer, which featured a lot of Badgers in it, held us over for a bit. Well, now was another sneak peek. EA Sports ranked the top 25 toughest places to play in the game. And of course, Camp Randall Stadium made the cut. It's seventh on the list. Texas A&M's Kyle Field was number one. Speaking of college football, Trey Poteet is headed to the SEC. The Verona standout committed to Tennessee this afternoon, choosing the Vols over Wisconsin, Florida, Michigan, Penn State, and other big-time programs. The four-star cornerback helped lead the Wildcats to a Big A championship and a trip to level three of the playoffs last season. Brewers taking on the Rangers in game two of their three-game series. Down a run in the fifth, but not for long. Joey Ortiz sneaks a solo shot just over the wall and left to give the crew the two-to-one lead. And then in the seventh, Reese Hoskins acting like he works for State Farm in his spare time. Hoskins smacks one back up the middle for some insurance. Brewers go on to win three to one the final. And earlier in the day, the Brewers added another arm to their lineup, acquiring Dallas Keuchel from the Mariners for cash. The 36-year-old left-hander is a two-time All-Star and a five-time Gold Glove winner. Keuchel, though, hasn't played in the majors since 2023. He's 7-4 in 13 starts in AAA this season. We're back after this. Welcome into Buzz in Madison. How about this for props for our story today? We're up in Wisconsin Dells at Walk Era Farms with Farmer Allie and introduce us to your main mascot. This is Automatic. She's a seven-year-old Holstein dairy cow, and she is our pride and joy here at Walkera Farms. And Allie says to me before we start, she's basically like a dog. She'll just stand here the <laughs> whole time, which is amazing. Your great-great-grandparents started the dairy operation here in 1941. What does this mean to you to be a part of something so special? Yeah, it's really special to me to be able to carry on such a great legacy, um, not only for my great-grandparents, but from dairy farmers all across Wisconsin. It's just a wonderful industry to grow up in and to be able to carry on to other young adults and youth throughout the state and um, be able to share what we love with our consumers. Now you moved away, you went to college, played D1 softball at Michigan State, but decided your love for the cows and, and the cow's genetics really brought you back to the farm. Yeah, so growing up, um, my parents really encouraged me to get out there and compete with them in the show ring. Um, and I grew to love it and did it throughout high school and throughout college. And now that sports are done, it's kind of another uh, great competitive aspect for me to be able to continue throughout my adult life. Now let's talk about Mullins cheese because that's where your milk goes to. But it makes so much more than just cheese. Yeah, at Mullins they also make whey protein powder and then also spirits. So our milk is turned into gin and vodka as well. Imagine that. All the different ways you can help support not only Walk Era Farms, but all of the dairy farmers throughout our great state of Wisconsin. Thank you so much. She's been absolutely amazing. From Walk Era Farms, I'm Emmy Fink and you're buzzed into Madison. If there's one thing we like, it's choices. And your Ford dealer is the place to start with a full lineup of vehicles and available powertrains. Get your ideal combination of power and capability with gas, hybrid, or all electric. 
But more important than the power you choose is what you choose to do with it. Choose FlexBuy on a new Ford Explorer and get 1.9% APR financing for 66 months. Only at your local Wisconsin Ford dealer. In the courtroom, we see Donald Trump for who he is. He's been convicted of 34 felonies, found liable for sexual assault, and he committed financial fraud. Meanwhile, Joe Biden's been working, lowering health care costs and making big corporations pay their fair share. This election is between a convicted criminal who's only out for himself and a president who's fighting for your family. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Going beyond the barometer in Wisconsin Dells, Thursday at 6. Tonight on The Late Show. Earliest memory. Getting my driver's license. <laughs> that can't be right, can it? David Letterman takes the Colbert questionnaire. Tonight. Well, it was 15 years ago today Michael Jackson died from a medication overdose. An artist in Kosovo paying homage to the King of Pop and creating a portrait using grains and seeds to bring this mosaic to life. Oh, that's really cool. Look at that. Alrighty, guys. Our favorite Michael Jackson song. Zach, go. Uh, Billy Jean. I really like the beat. And I know you're giving me a little slack because, you know, it's one of the most popular ones, but it's, no, it's, it's a, a good, good song. It's a good song. You're allowed to pick the most popular one. Yeah, one thank them, you. <laughs> Jacob, what about you? So mine is uh, uh, Black and White. It actually came out in the yes. 90s, I'm pretty sure. Um, mostly because of that guitar rift, which was written and performed by Slash Gosh. from Guns N' Roses. Yes, it was. I'm a huge Not MJ surprising. fan. So, yeah. yes, that is awesome. Good choice. The way Thank you make you. me feel, you rock my world. Those are my <laughs> favorites. Like too. <laughs> um, we were singing, uh, singing hee hee for this whole forecast, though, today, <laughs> wow. after that story was uh, yeah. uh, done. Uh, we're going to we're gonna see co more comfortable temperatures going forward. Tomorrow will be cooler than today, but still warm. Plenty of sunshine. 70s for the rest of the week. Sunday, lower 70s. Going to see some showers and storms Friday, but very little severe weather risk. More storms and warmer temperatures for next week as we head towards the 4th. There we go. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow on News 3 Now this morning.